known for turning around loss making businesses and driving operational improvements in italian company ceo of the one of the largest uh, you know manufacturing plant of bombardine a workforce of around 3500 i was in charge of the csr activities technology can be used to create you know transparent and traceable sourcing supply chain Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to the esteemed face time with leaders an initiative by world development corporation i am sunny bancholi anchor at world development corporation face time with leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences thoughts ideas and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders in a nutshell we attempt to encapsulate the multi decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders We also hope that by conducting these face time with leaders interviews we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities by bringing together such visionaries on one platform we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying nurturing and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many and this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community we have one such corporate heavyweight on face time with leaders with us today mr vijay kumar maheshwari he has an illustrious career spanning nearly 3 and a half decades his journey is marked by transformative leadership strategic decision making and a relentless pursuit of excellence known for turning around loss making businesses and driving operational improvements His career showcases a rare blend of techno-commercial acumen, effective people management, and a commitment to sustainable practices. In his latest role, he has served Mafatlal Industries Limited in the capacity of its president and business head, whereby he has managed end-to-end -end business verticals of operations, sales and marketing, finance and sourcing, and procurement for one of the oldest fashion fabric supplying textile firm. With a turnover of rupees four hundred crores per annum. Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders, Mr. Vijay. Thank you very much. I am delighted to be with you, Sunny. So to begin with, could you let our viewers know in brief about your career journey so far? You know, I graduated in engineering in nineteen eighty six from a premier textile institute in of uh, in northern India, TIT Bhivani. and i you know commenced my journey at raymond in mumbai where i was absorbed as a you know management trainee and after a cross departmental training of about one year you know i was absorbed in uh, operations so you know i seamlessly absorbed into operations in various departments i worked in the early years of raymond uh, immersed me into intricate you know management of uh, large manufacturing facility you know and exposing me to the very fine you know uh, intricate things of how a a department functions and you know what are the flow dynamics and how you know people work with each other and that was a fantastic exposure for 5 years you know i kept on climbing the hierarchical ladders very quickly at uh, the early stage of my career and i was appointed as a ceo of the one of the largest uh, you know manufacturing plant of bombardine in mumbai at that time it was a very you know massive size plant 135000 meters of fabric per day my age was just 35 you know i was the uh, you know the youngest and the senior most you know uh, key managerial personnel in the operations stalwarts you know with huge experience were reporting to me and a fantastic exposure you know uh, of manufacturing i oversaw uh, during this assignment uh, a workforce of around 3500 in mumbai you know the uh, there was uh, all the workers and you know the 
operatives were governed by a very stubborn and a strong union, you know, RMMSS that time. So any change, if you have to make there, you have to, you know, consult with the union. Take, you know, you can't just change anything you like. You have to bring them to the table. You have to discuss. You have to convince them and, you know, do a lot of, you know, uh, convincing to and make sure that you can make that change in the floor level. So under my leadership, you know, we achieved significant improvement in the operations there. Uh, you know, productivity improved. The major success was the seconds, you know, uh, the downgrading of the fabric, which we reduced almost by half in a span of two to three years. So that was, uh, you know, my performance was, uh, uh, was considered as to be the best in five years. I stayed there and that was the time when, you know, I learned a lot. I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, deputed to various training programs. I traveled a lot. You know, I visited a lot of customers worldwide during my stay at uh, Bombay Dine. Then, you know, in 2005, I decided to, uh, you know, divert a little because, you know, operations was my forte. I had spent a considerable amount of time. But then I decided to take a, you know, a little bit of a change and joined an Italian company, which is, uh, you know, one of the largest workwear company of the world. So massive size, you know, of uh, massive, uh, big, you know, uh, uh, resource, uh, raw material, you know, import this company was doing from, you know, various countries across the world. So I was, you know, uh, placed in Mumbai, in India, and uh, I was, you know, traveling a lot. My international travels was almost, you know, 15 to 20 days in a month. And, you know, I visited almost 100 different plants in various countries. And that gave me a fantastic exposure, you know, an alternative perspective of how, you know, other companies work, in what way, you know, we are different, how, you know, they are better, in what way we are better. And, you know, that gave me a lot of, you know, insights into the manufacturing operations and, you know, their systems and their, you know, way of looking at things. So it was a fantastic exposure. I stayed there for three years and almost, you know, 15 to 20 days in a month, I was traveling it from one place to the other and, you know, negotiating the, uh, you know, uh, deals and uh, finalizing the raw material procurement. So in 2008, you know, I decided to come back to my core area which is operational excellence and uh, taking up a role of a business head of uh, Moraji Textiles in Nagpur. It is a, it was a you know, very big plant, almost 2,700 employees, 400 crore turnover. And, uh, but the, you know, the situation was very, very difficult there at that time, the, the manufacturing facilities and the business overall was struggling. A lot cash losses were there, you know. Uh, uh, lot of problems were there, you know. When I joined, I asked the first question that the, the you know the out of 150, 175 staff members, how old you know they uh, are they, and uh, you know since when they are with us, and I got a shocking reply that you know none of the employee is older than one year with the company. So that was, you know, massive turnover of people, you know, it indicates that there was a lot of, you know, politicking, a lot of, you know, groupism. So I, you know, came on to the board and with an aim that, you know, I have to revive this plant. And I stayed there for five years and, uh, you know, did a lot of changes starting from the team you know i did a SWOT analysis and found right people for the right job and uh, you know uh, we improved the productivity we had you know wherever the investment was needed was brought in uh, the quality levels were brought up the you know sops were implemented at each manufacturing step one by one one by one and uh, it started showing great, remarkable, you know, improvement. Uh, and, uh, you know, I 
left that uh, company with on a very higher note and you know my got a best company of the year award also when i left all five six years i worked here you know my performance was uh, considered as best and the taking the similar type of you know uh, uh, thing momentum uh, forward i joined mafatlal industries in 2014 and uh, the situation there again you know it was more or less similar to what was at moraji textile in 2008 and the challenge was much more severe in terms of that you know technological side the plant was not fully modernized 50 percent of the, the machineries were very old so you know you were not able to achieve the advantage of you know whatever investment you have made because you know you the product from much one uh, new machine will go to the old then again to the new again to the old and you know you don't gain fully the advantages of the technology so there also you know i adopted a very you know long lasting and long term uh, strategic uh, approach and uh, brought the plant up and you know it came to a break even level we did not you know uh, enhance the we could not you know make it profitable because of several reasons but you know it was it came on to the break even level so this is you know my journey in nutshell uh, of uh, last you know th 35 years so Vijay, thank you for the excellent start to this interview and i must say your career journey is truly inspiring thank you thank you very much <laughs> so continuing our conversation our viewers would like to know in your career, you have been acclaimed turning around loss-making businesses. So could you share a specific example of a challenging situation you encountered and how you approached it to achieve success? You know, the uh, the last, I would uh, like to take the example of the last assignment, uh, you know, which I undertook in 2014. is in a little bit of a detail. You know, the business, when I joined, the business was making cash losses, capacity utilization was lower than 50%. The business was not at all competitive. It was in the segment of, you know, top wear, the shirting and the lightweight fabric. There was a total imbalance in the, you know, in the manufacturing processes. In textile, you know what happens? The one, the product from one machinery go to the next, go to, and then to the next, then to the next. So, you know, the, there was imbalance. So that was resulting into huge, you know, pileup of the inventory in the process. Because, you know, one machine will produce, then the old machine, you know, it went into breakdown. So the entire production will be piled up before the next machine. So this way, you know, the entire process was mismanaged and, you know, imbalanced. And the biggest issue there at that time was, you know, the DA linked wages which, you know, very few companies in India now have, where, you know, depending upon the DA, the dearness uh, allowance, you know, uh, the wages of the workers keep on rising, depending upon the, you know, cost of uh, living and, you know, the, uh, uh, the index declared by the government, depending upon the cost of living increase. So, irrespective of the performance of the business, the wages kept on rising and the situation became that, you know, it the manpower cost as a percentage of sales reached to a level of 26. The benchmark for, you know, manpower cost as a percentage of sale is just 8 to 9%. So, we were completely, you know, uh, out in terms of the wages. And that was making the entire plant, you know, non-competitive and, you know, we were not able to stand in our, you know, prices. We were quoting to the customers were way higher than the competition. So, you know, uh, this, this was the situation that, you know, on same was the situation in the marketplace. The morale of the, you know, dealer network was very low. The on-time deliveries were very low, you know, 50%. No efforts were made in the, you know, manufacturing facility for launching new products. There was no vibrancy, you know. These were a lot of challenges I faced. And then, you know, I decided that I have to, you know, improve it and we have to, you know, take the plant out 
of this mess. So we identify, you know, first of all, the machinery bottlenecks. And we made a detailed plan uh, with justifications, with, you know, payback calculations and compared various technologies across the world, you know, wherever the technologies are available and, you know, convince the management that uh, we should add those machineries. Those machines will, you know, remove the bottlenecks, will streamline the process flow of the material in the, you know, uh, manufacturing, you know, lines. And uh, we prioritize the investment that from, you know, which machineries are to be brought first and, you know, how we can stagger it so that the entire burden of uh, investment doesn't come at one go. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we uh, at Marketplace, we worked a lot. We strengthened the dealer network throughout the India, you know, there was a pan-India dealer network where, uh, you know, we had uh, worked a lot and strengthened the entire network. We introduced a lot of new products, uh, you know, in whites as well as print category. The printed fabric export started to the neighboring countries and to Euro for the first time under my leadership. And we, you know, uh, started adding very reputed brands to our, you know, kitty of uh, customers very rapidly. And we, you know, finally, when I left, uh, we were one of the best, you know, supplier to the best domestic as well as, you know, international brands in the, in the world. And the volumes went up, you know, because of productivity improved, uh, the cost of production went down, but, you know, we could not, unfortunately, arrange the resources for giving the VRS to the older workforce, which was very expensive. So, in spite of, you know, so much of a hard work and, uh, you know, efforts, we could brought down the manpower cost only up to the extent of 21%. And that remained a pain, pain point till the end. And, you know, that was an area which, uh, we could not, uh, you know, act upon because of the constraints in the resources. So this is one example where, you know, in spite of all the odds, you know, in spite of, you know, issues everywhere, we didn't lose hope and at least, the, uh, you know, brought up the business from, uh, uh, you know, from a cash loss situation to the break. That sounds incredible. So building on to that, among your achievements, the best company of the group award stands out. So what specific initiatives contributed to earning this recognition? Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, go, got this award from the cha chairperson of the group, Mrs. Uh, Urvi Piramal in Moraji Textiles. I uh, joined, you know, this company in 2008, like I have mentioned before. And like I have mentioned, the situation when I joined was... Again, similar to what was in Mafadlal Industries uh, in 2014. <clears throat> Everywhere, you know, there was issues. There was, you know, you can't say that, you know, one department is functioning well. You know, everywhere there were issues and everywhere there were problems and there was firefighting all around. Uh, you know, uh, I had to build a business from the scratch, basically. Every aspect of the business needed attention, overalling, customer trust has to be regained, you know, all actions has to be simultaneous. You know, there were a lot of pressure from the top that, you know, act fast, come on, do it, revive it, because every day the losses were mounting. So, you know, I kept cool, number one, because in such circumstances, it's very difficult for a leader to remain calm and composed. Because when you're sitting in, in your office and when, you know, every five minutes, you know, issues kept coming onto your table, keeping cool and composed is very, very essential. So I kept cool. I, you know, adopted a strategic and systematic approach. And, you know, address each challenge incrementally. You know, I never thought that, you know, everything I'll make it right at one day. So... It was, you know, a gradual approach, took one thing in hand, 
you know attended it fully you know had massive you know long meetings convinced people you know implement solutions you know implementing it and keeping the entire thing under my control so one by one one by one one by one you know it, it took little more time but that was the only option because you could not you know function all at a time because everywhere there are there were you know large issues so you know i conducted a sort analysis there as well and uh, of the people and uh, you know um, make a mixed blend of old and the newer people i added so that you know the morale doesn't go the older people don't feel sidelined you know there was a you know team play between older and the newer people and a mix you know they are gelling together well and working as a team you know as a cohesive team as a you know and you know i initiated project approach you know working together in teams you know dissecting the issues dissecting the challenges finding innovative solutions cost effective solutions and you know implementing them so the project approach and you know what is being taught in the total total quality management uh helps a lot in you know in in uh, implementing the solutions sitting in you know board rooms and finding solutions is comparatively easy but implementing them on the shop floor is challenging because people you know resist people don't you know uh, think that you know this solution is the right one so but when you involve even them you know you, i was even sitting with the workers also on you uh, on uh, on a table and in even convincing workers supervisors you know staff members you tell what is the solution and you know whatever i had in mind i i used to you know take out from their mouth and in, you know finally deciding that this is the final solution so when they went outside you know they felt impo important that they were involved and they implemented it and you know we had a uh, great deal of improvement all around improvement you know i was expecting it will happen in 3 4 years but you know within 2 years the plant came on to the line and you know it it started functioning uh, the way i could imagine and you know my in 2008 and 2000 you know 2007 and 2008 8 9 there were cash losses in the company and uh, you know we achieved a imp improvement of 34% in the you know rise in the productivity 5% you know conversion cost went down 26% sales rose because there was a you know improvement in the productivity and 151% rise in the roc and these figures you know prompted chairperson to you know select uh, my business as the best company of the year award and that was a very proud moment for all of us exceptional truly exceptional all right so now that we have discussed your career journey your professional pursuits roles and responsibilities challenges and how have you overcome them let's dive into the subject of esg and corporate governance so here is my question to you and a very obvious one how and when did you develop an interest in esg and corporate governance uh, you know uh, as i mentioned earlier i i you know uh, moved very quickly in my career uh, in the hierarchical ladder at the age of 35 you know i was managing a one of the largest textile plant in the in the country so because of that you know i was at the forefront of having direct communication with the senior management with the board of directors not as the you know the, the member of the board of directors but you know i used to be an invitee and you know be a uh, on you know specific issues i was being called and you know i used to give presentations to them and uh, you know that helped me a lot to understand corporate governance issues at you know much earlier in my uh, my, my career so as a dynamic you know business head i and in last 14 years 15 years you know since 2008 i assumed the responsibility of delivering the impactful presentations to the board 
and the issues were you know like all operations head has to you know uh, talk about corporate governance i was in charge of the csr activities at both the places you know i had to the internal audit of the plant was happening under me so i had to you know present to the board the internal audit findings and what corrective actions we are taking and you know these all areas were of great interest to me so they were not only just you know for academic uh, thing and just for presenting to the board i used to take interest they were you know quite close to my heart and i used to uh, you know take very genuine interest in them so esg and you know corporate governance has been a, a, you know these are the subjects which i am in touch with last almost 25 years and i'm very you know genuinely genuinely interested in them so mr vijay as an esg and corporate governance expert what values do you bring to the table during my professional journey i have cultivated a solid you know understanding of the business dynamics number one you know the this seasoned expertise positions me appropriately to grasp you know significance of esg and corporate governance in a much better manner than the others number 2 and you know secondly i have you know carried out number of you know turnarounds of businesses in my career like i have mentioned and you know bringing the loss making uh, businesses and you know that enables me to you know understand you know very uh, critically that you know i know what happens when corporate governance is not managed properly so you know i am i have seen you know if we ignore you know corporate governance practices what happens with the businesses i i have seen them in front of my eyes and you know that gives me lot of strength lot of you know uh, insight into the importance of esg and corporate governance so my wealth of experience uniquely you know equips me uh to contribute significantly uh, to the development of successful and sustainable businesses that is what i feel and i can bring that to the table and you know help in uh, becoming you know businesses becoming sustainable absolutely mr vijay let's move on from the subject of esg and corporate governance and let's dive into the subject of technology and its impact on your professional landscape so here is my question to you what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology that is part a and part b is what changes do you expect to see with the advent of iot ai ml blockchain big data web 3.0 etc you know there are a lot of uh, notable and uh, changes in the textile industry Uh, driven by technological advance i am fortunate that you know i have visited almost four or five you know uh, itma exhibitions which happens in europe where you know technological ad- advancements in all the technologies are displayed i can you know give some examples and talk of those advancements uh, in automation and robotics we have seen tremendous changes in the textile industries because you know textile industry is a labor intensive intensive industry and there is a constant endeavor to uh, reduce the labor deployment so machinery manufacturers gradually have uh, incorporated lot of automation lot of robotics into the machineries so in with a view that you know we have better quality at lower cost uh, you know i would also cite an example of uh, digital printing uh, the fabric in a textile industry is being printed you know conventionally by rotary printing machines or flat bed printing machines which are very cumbersome processes and very difficult you know you can't uh, they are very slow also so now you know digital printing of fabrics have come in a massive way across the world where you know you can print a fabric very accurately 
the colors are very accurate the reproducibility of the fabric is much much better than you know uh, the conventional printing uh, you can they are so accurate and so precise that even eyelids can be you know you can print on a piece of a fabric so you know digital printing is one area in textile industry which is catching up very fast you know it is already almost 5 to 10 years 10 years or plus old and is you know coming up with lot of advancements then there are you know sustainable practices uh, i really feel that you know technology has played crucial role in uh, in uh, promoting sustainability in the textile industry from eco friendly dyeing processes where you know there a lot of wastage of water and the you know dyes are being released in the in the water newer technologies of dyeing have come where you know they are talking of waterless dyeing so fabric will be put you know chemicals will be put and the fabric is dyed under pressure without you know chemicals and without any effluent discharge the entire dyes goes in inside the fabric and you achieve that without you know harming the environment and the industry has you know also done so many things to have you know uh, environmental impact like zero discharge zero liquid discharge is a major thing and you know government also is enforcing it very diligently and very strongly across the country because textile industries with processing are you know uh, releasing lot of you know harmful uh, effluent so now with zero discharge uh, liquid discharge systems you know entire uh, effluent is being treated fresh water is being been extracted and the harmful chemicals are being you know uh, tackled separate now you talked about you know uh, internet uh, iot and you know i really feel that these newer technologies will have a very big impact in textiles in the entire industry industrial segment in time to come uh, integration of iot devices in textiles can you know enable real time monitoring of various parameters such as temperature humidity and you know other ph and other parameters uh, inside the machine which are very very essential so and already you know a lot of textile manufacturers have started you know building these things into the machineries and this is going to further uh, improve ai and ml also you know i feel has got lot of applications in the textile in industry that uh, basically textile industry is very cyclic in nature the sales doesn't happen same throughout all the months you know it, it keep keep on varying some months of the year you know the sale is more some month of the year the sale is less so sales forecasting you know uh, and uh, you know budgeting in textiles ai and ml can play a very wider role and you know we have to predict what is hap going to happen in you know in next few months so that you can plan the production properly similarly you know uh, blockchain technology can be used to create you know transparent and traceable sourcing supply chain you know uh, can be used in textile industry because most of the textile plants are not you know uh, fully integrated so there are lot of sourcing involved sourcing of raw material sourcing of dyes and chemicals so sourcing of auxiliaries there are lot of you know complex uh, supply chain is involved in manufacturing of textiles so you know in that blockchain can play a very vital role in time to come according to me big data also is very useful because you know it can it's a it's a data it is linked to data analytics which can provide uh, you know valuable insights into consumer preferences it it's a very big challenge in a textile manufacturing plant and you know uh, that what to produce what will sell what are the choices you know what are the consumer preferences and how it is changing you know in what way you know you can 
you can uh, you know you can modify your make to order manufacturing facility so that the inventories are at a lower level so big data and data analytics are going to be very very important role in textile industry in time to come i feel exactly said mr vijay and thank you for sharing such amazing insights into different different subjects so this brings us to the last question of the session we are building a community of industry magnets the move is meant for cross pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts so what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by mr zishan pathan mr hevel mehta and the whole team of world development corporation uh, yeah you know uh, if you know india has to become a 5 trillion and then 10 trillion economies in next 5 to 10 years the corporates the new businesses has to perform you know this is a very uh, you know obvious and good co corporate governance is you know what i think is needed very badly to achieve these objective and uh, you know boards have to play a very crucial role very proactive role in you know deciding strategic directions for the company you know a very quick reactive time has to be there in place because changes are happening so quickly in within one season you know you are at a new uh, in, in in a new environment and uh, so important of independent you know directors is further being you know going up and up because one person cannot do all the things and i would say that mr jishan pathan and mr hevel mehta and your entire you know world development corporation team is doing an excellent work in you know bridging that gap we have you know big shortage of quality independent directors you know uh, selecting good um, you know uh, manpower and training them and providing it to the industry is a is a very good social service also i i, I would say now it's a need of the hour i congratulate mr pathan and mr mehta and the entire you know the team for uh, all the best for you know doing uh, the, for for this endeavor i have you know just completed the first module of the directors program is excellently designed so user friendly so you know you enjoy you know going through it and very nice i have you know very positive remarks about both these gentlemen and uh, i wish them all the best for their uh, great it was fantastic conversing with you and i'm confident that our insights will inspire future leaders thank you mr vijay for joining us today wish you the best for your future endeavors more over Trust that this initiative by Directors Institute has unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and enriched the minds. Thank you, thank you, Sunny. Thanks a lot. I enjoyed you know talking to you. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, likewise, and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.